Now, coming back to the Aragalia, Dr. Harini, there's a, there's a narrative in the media about um, the Aragalia being a JVP movement. So, it's the media did a very, very easy link, right? As soon as there was violence, they linked it to the JVP or the IUSF. Now, and the Prime Minister, I think within a week of taking power, he was on international media calling the IUSF a, a militant organization very specifically. Mm -hmm. Now, could you just, um, for our audience, tell us about the JVP's involvement in the Aragalia? And can you sort of comment on this idea that people had that the Aragalia is apolitical? Now, mm. apolitical or being apolitical, it's a tricky concept mm. in itself, especially when you're talking about a very political issue. Mm. So could you just comment on, on the JVP's mm. role and mm. how you mm. feel about the apolitical nature or the supposed mm. apolitical nature of the Argale? Uh, let me start with the second bit first, because I think that links to uh, your question about the role of the JVP in the Aragale. Um I think I, I, apolitical is problematic, because this is a, this is a this, the Aragale that is calling for political reform. And, that reform then requ uh, requires you to take a political stand and a political position, right? So uh, I think a lot of people don't necessarily understand what they mean when they say apolitical, right? And also it comes from this um, feeling that politics is bad, right? And that's problematic also. Uh, I think, but more, most people described it as non-partisan. That I think is fair enough, right? Because that, that Aragalea had uh, people who were part of political parties, who were not, who were independent, who were floating voters. It had everybody. So in that sense, the Aragalea represented everybody, not necessarily one political party or movement. So in that sense, to describe it as non-partisan, I think is completely fine, because that, that was the reality, right? Yeah. And that is the reality. And the JVP as well as the NPP were very, very sensitive to that, uh, to that notion of, uh, of the Aragalea being a non-partisan space and a non-partisan movement. But of course, many of our supporters were there. Many of our uh, groups, our women's groups, our student groups, our, our cultural groups were part of the Aragalea, right? They didn't go there carrying a JVP or an NPP flag. They were they are as citizens and they, they were there as members of an organization that subscribed to the values that were being advocated by, by the Aragale, right? And, and I, just as much as there were those from other political parties and movements as well, some who were obviously linked to a political party or movement and some who were not. So I don't see any problem in that and I find this sort of post May 9th sort of sudden, oh my gosh, the JVP was there, a bit naive, right? Of course the JVP was there, of course the FSP was there, so was the SJB and so were lots of others. Do you think the media drives a little bit? Media drives it, but I think also this sort of, again, it's linked to that earlier thing that I talked about, like, and I think that's a very sort of, I'm sorry, I'm going to sound a little probably a little controversial here, but a very urban middle class thing that transformation, political transformation can somehow happen without the involvement of politics. That it's some, it's like, it's almost like it's some kind of NGO project, mm -hmm. right? It's not. We are talking about structural change here. We are talking about political transformation and that's not a, that's not a project, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, so I think that's, I, I, you won't find it uh, out in, and the Aragale is not confined to golf face also. It's spread. And if you go out and you talk to people who've been part of this specific go to go home Aragale and beyond, they're, they're, they, have, they don't have the same sort of qualms or the same reaction to the, the presence of political parties in those spaces, right? So, so in that sense, then it was a very sort of easy and lazy link that the violence is attributed to the JVP or to the IUSF, right? Um, and that completely kind of also misses the, the trigger to the, to the incidents of the 9th. It's a reaction. It's a reaction. It was a response. And if you were there, if you saw what was going on, I think people, people responded very uh, 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 in, in, by, by instinct. 
I mean, I saw people rushing out of their office buildings to go join this because there's a, they, say, they heard that the space was being attacked. Right? I, I've met with people who said they were driving their cars when they heard and they parked and they ran. Right? Because they, they, they felt personally attacked and they felt the space needed to be protected. Right? Certainly then what happened in the evening went beyond uh, that initial reaction of wanting to protect that space and to push back on, 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 on an attack on a very peaceful protest site. Right? And, and those and the, the violence, it, we condemn without reservation. That's not how we should do things in this country. But unfortunately, that is how we have done things in this country. This is not the first time. Right? And I think there's a, the, all of this need has raised the need for us to examine uh, why we respond in those violent ways as a society. Right? And I think it's very lazy uh, to just sort of say, ah, that's the JVP and that's the RUSF and absolve uh, ourselves and everyone else from that violence. And also, it's very, very, um, it's, it's completely then not, not con taking into consideration the trigger in the morning, yeah. which was the cause of, uh, the main cause for what happened thereafter. Yeah.